Now, before we start this video, I'm going to give you one quick tip on how you can save money when it comes to debugging your code. Because at this point, we're all familiar with the rubber duck method, where we buy a rubber duck and we explain code to this stupid little rubber duck, and then we find the error. But why would you go through the trouble of buying this piece of toxic rubber when you can just go to your kitchen, find the banana and explain the code to the banana. And you also save 10 bucks or something. I mean, there's no reason not to explain your code to a banana. But do let me know in the comment section down below what kind of items you explain your code to. I promise I won't judge you. But with that awful intro being done, let's go ahead and talk about linting in Python. Linters can really help us find some issues with our code, such as conventions and styling issues. So pretty much they can help us spot mistakes and bad naming conventions much earlier on so that we don't have to look so hard to see what we're doing wrong with our code. So to demonstrate how we can use the linter, I went ahead and created a really nice script, one that imports random, doesn't use it, prints running, and then it has a version constant that says one. Then we have a function that prints a parameter. We have a class of fruit with an initializer that gives it a name and a method that describes this fruit. And then I went ahead and called some of the code down here. So we have the function with the parameter, the fruit with pasta and describing what the fruit actually is. Now running the code doesn't really matter. We get the expected output. It's a robust program, but that doesn't mean that it isn't perfect. And if you could spot everything that was wrong with this code, you are a mastermind because there's a lot wrong with this code according to the linter. Now to use the linter, we're going to go ahead and type in pip install pylint. And that's the linter that we're going to be using for this video. Now I might actually increase the size of the code so you guys can see it a bit better. So we'll do something like that. And inside here, we're going to clear the console and go ahead and type in pylint main.py. And this is the file that I want to lint in Python. So if we go ahead and tap enter, it's going to give me a score of 4.29 out of 10. And it actually dropped for some reason while I wasn't paying attention. So let's go ahead and find out what's wrong with our code because it looks pretty robust. I mean, we didn't really do anything wrong, or at least that's what I would like to think. Now, if we go ahead and open this up, we're going to get a lot of lines of code. So here you can see module main, and this is what it found that was wrong with our program. So let's go down and fix it one by one. Now, the first one we have is trailing white space. And where do we have this trailing white space? At line 23. So if we go down to line 23, we can see that we have a random white space here. So we can just delete that. We do need the extra line, but we do not need that trailing white space. Now, if we go ahead and run this one more time, that error should disappear from here. So as you can see, we got an increase in our score. So now it's five out of 10 we don't have that random trailing white space. So we saved the line of code and pylint is a bit happier. Now we're missing a module doc string. So let's go ahead and add that. We can go ahead and say, this is a module doc string. Something simple to keep the program happy. And of course you should write something much more descriptive if you're creating a module. So we're going to add that doc string and then constant name version doesn't conform to uppercase naming style. So as you can see, we don't get any pep errors for this naming convention, but it's just something you want to have when you're creating big projects and you want other people to read this. We can go ahead and type in version and you can even verify something like this by tapping on random. If you scroll to the top, if I'll ever get there, you'll notice that the constants from the random module actually have uppercase conventions. And again, Pep wouldn't warn you about this, but it's something good to have if you want other people to easily read your code and know what it is. But let's go ahead and run this again in the terminal. We have pylint main.py. Now we have a 6.43 in our program. It's getting better. We're actually improving it a lot. And we can also go ahead and take care of this unused import immediately. We can say, we don't care about the random since we never use it. We're just going to remove that. Now it's important we continuously run this because of course, if we change a line of code, it's not going to accurately give us the correct line anymore. So you're going to have to run it several times after you fix the code. So now we have 6.92 and we only have four issues left. Now we're missing a function or method doc string at line number seven. So that's for function. And we're just going to go ahead and type in function doc 
string. And for the fruit, we're missing the same thing. So we're going to go ahead and type in class doc string. Whatever you want your class to do, type it in there. And we'll go ahead and run this one more time. Now we have an 8.46. Our code is really starting to come together. Now we still have some problems at line 18, such as this doesn't have a doc string. So we can go ahead and type in doc string. And it also wants us to have another method in our class because if you only have one method in your class, it might as well just be a static function because you're just cluttering your program with an unnecessary initializer, which could just be a function. So let's go ahead and add another method here that says seconds. We'll add the doc string so the program is happy, doc string, and we'll just return hello. A real good method. Now it is static, but it doesn't matter. We're going to go ahead and run this one more time. So here, pylint main.py, and we're going to have a 10 out of 10. We've done everything that pylint could suggest to us, which means that now we have some code that conforms relatively well to Python standards. And you should take all of this with a grain of salt because pylint is not going to catch everything. You can still make errors in your code, but linting will give you a lot of useful information that you might not catch just by looking at your program, such as module strings, naming conventions, errors. If you do something weird and don't spot it, and pep doesn't spot it, and PyCharm doesn't spot it, there's going to be a good chance that pylint will spot it. But there are many different linters out there, so go ahead and just type in on Google linters for Python, and you should get several results coming up. And they all work pretty much the same way, and some catch errors that others don't, and vice versa. So you really need to do your own research on which linter you want to use. PyLint is extremely simple to use, as you could see here. All we had to do is go ahead and open up the terminal, type in PyLint, followed by the module we want to debug, and there we go, we get a score back and it tells us how much we improved it each time. So we were able to edit our code accordingly. But with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. Do let me know what you think about linting in the comment section down below. And as always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.